let me get your response to this. So for, from my understanding, I've been in Canada now for, for about nine years, going to 10 years. From my understanding, it looks like the country does not actually elect leaders. It looks like the country votes out leaders. And what I mean is, I think the last election was more of everybody got fed up or most people got fed up with the conservatives. I think you mentioned that in our last conversation as well. And then that's how this current administration came into power. Where does that lead us, especially knowing that there will be an election very soon? I know you're not a politician, but what, what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, I remember when Harper was in government and I can't even remember why he was so hated at the end, but it was, it was more to do with like, I, I don't think it was anything to do with the economy. And I, I could just research this, but it's, and we always think back and like, he wasn't so bad, right? It's, I think it was more of the ideology and, um, you know, this, his old school ways of the conservative ways where we wanted to move forward into this more modern country. And I was even on board mm -hmm. with the more modern, you know, prime minister and, uh, I didn't vote for him, thankfully. So you can't blame me, but, uh, he was, <laughs> you know, I was like, okay, this guy's not like, I didn't, we didn't hate him. We didn't say, oh, I hope this guy never wins. Like, you know, in the States, you know, you have the politics over there in 2016, there was none of that. It was just like, but people hated um, Harper at the end. But I think it was just because he, when you're around for so long, you can only serve for so long before people get fed up with you and you need to bring someone new in. So, uh, and that was why we were voting on this, maybe this new, modern, young, fresh face. And, um, but, you know, we look back and maybe it wasn't so bad, right? And, uh, and, and Trudeau was great in the first few years. Like people loved him and, you know, I don't know what he actually did uh, for the country, but he said some nice things. But then he just started going too extreme and too far left, right? Um, where, you know, there's it, it can only go so far. And now we're seeing people have given up on that, those hopes of, um, you know, his, his social uh, things that he was doing, um, you know, equality and, 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 you know, reparations or not reparations, uh, you know, with, with all this stuff he did um, for, you know, indigenous people. And this is all great and well needed, but, you know, that's a part of the equation, but he he didn't fulfill even those when you talk about fresh drinking water, like he promised in all these communities, he didn't actually do those, but he talks about them. He talks a, a big talk. And when it comes to the economy, he's the worst, like he's probably the worst prime minister in Canadian history. So um, I think that people voted with their hearts instead of with their brains when it comes to Trudeau. And uh, because he does, he is, a, he is a good politician, right? He says the right things. He knows how to pull at your, your heartstrings and, uh, and get the votes. And he got a lot of the, those female votes and the, the, the 905 soccer moms, whatever they call them, right? Um, mm -hmm. So, and, and it's great. Like the liberal, the liberal kind of, agenda it's it's a good you know thing for society and somebody said something the other day about you know the the, the liberals they they put their they put their foot on the accelerator while the conservatives they have their foot on the brake right <laughs> and, and that's mm -hmm. where you want to move forward and you want to move forward into this modern country you do it with him but but it, there was no real plan for the economy because the economy was fine he didn't have to talk about the economy he had to talk about climate change and uh, whatever other social issues he, he had to talk about, I think it was legalizing marijuana maybe or something um, and uh, medically assisted suicide or something. These, these were the platform, the kind of things he ran on because money wasn't an issue. But when money in housing becomes an issue, people don't care about those other social issues now. They're sick of them. <laughs> They're like, you know what? Right. I'm starving and I got nowhere to live. I couldn't care less who's equal and who's not at this point. Like I want... I got to take care of myself, right? And this is where we're at. Yeah. And it's sad that we got to this point, but this is what they've created. And uh, charity, charity can only go so far. And this is, uh, it's, it looks like it's ended in Canada right now. Right. And I think this is a point where as much as possible, uh, people need to begin to make up their mind to what really matters to them. And uh, I'll get your reaction to this question as well. People need to get to the point that they decide what really matters to them in every election. And it's also in this kind of situation that we realize that every level of leadership in the country matters. 
no matter how much we want to overlook it or overestimate it, they really matter. The, the choices we make or the choices we don't make, they really matter. But let, let me get your thoughts. So this is 2024. And I've been asking these questions to people I've been talking to on the podcast behind the scenes, but I think I want to start asking people actually while on the podcast. There's a lot of conversations out there now, probably way more than ever before. I think right now, you know, a platform like YouTube for you and I, right? You can sit and toss a mic on the desk and you can have a good conversation and people out there can see it compared to even 10, 20 years ago, right? The, the platform mm -hmm. wasn't there. There is a whole lot of conversations, but I think more and more in me uh, trying to analyze modern society and some of the challenges that are peculiar to, this, to, to, to modern society, I realize in spite of all the conversations out there, there's still the weakness in the way people make choices still. And I have been asking this. How can you pull conversations together to actually make an impact? Elections are going to be around the corner in, in a matter of months now. But how can conversations actually matter in the minds of people such that we're not waiting for another election to be called or like in the United States, you're, you're waiting for the next four years to vote out the incumbent. But are people actually powerless in the four years while the term is ongoing, what should people really derive from meaningful conversations? What do you think about that? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. It's it's almost like you feel powerless in between elections, and um, you know, with with the example here now, you know, the opposition in Canada they've really focused on what Canadians want, and they've done great. And you can see in the polls, they focused on housing, and people want housing and jobs, right? And 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 finally, the government caught on, and now they're focusing on housing because it was always climate change, climate change, climate change. And again, if if you have to ask somebody, do you care about feeding your family or do you care about climate change that you may or may not have an impact on? I think the answer is going to be pretty clear. So when it comes to, yeah, like when you're in between election cycles, what do you do? Well, you have to speak up you have to call your mps you have to maybe protest when things get really bad you see protests break out and i i say this quite often when people say well prices are just going to keep going up and i say if prices even stay the same let alone go up you're going to see civil unrest and civil disobedience because people can only take so much and every day that passes less people can afford a home right now in canada and more people Younger people are entering that home buying phase that can't afford a home and they're, they've given up hope. So why would people work? Why would people do what they're supposed to do, right? Because that's what people say. It, it kills you've, productivity, yes. Yeah, you've done, and they always say it, you've done what you're supposed to do. You went to school or you got a career or whatever the case may be, you should be able to afford a home. And even they say it uh, in that housing plan in the first paragraph before they get into those three sections. They talk about uh, you know, young Canadians work hard. They should be able to afford a home. They shouldn't be spending any more than 30% of their income on a home. Well, that can only go on for so long before society <laughs> starts to fall apart and starts to get right. disrupted. And, and this is what I hope, I hope this is the road that we don't go down, but if it continues, we will. Um, so the only other option is to make housing affordable, uh, not more unaffordable, right? So... Uh, so yeah, so hopefully we don't see that extreme, but I wouldn't put it out of the realm of possibilities, but we need right. to, yeah, we need to speak up, have a voice uh, in whatever way you can. Revaluate is a project I embarked upon to spark meaningful conversations that can inspire critical thinking as we navigate the adventures of life. The analytics on this channel show about 95% of the viewers on the channel haven't subscribed yet. So you do me a favor by clicking the subscribe button right now, and I'll keep my promise to continually improve on the quality of the conversations that are produced on this channel every time.